back with Tim Doyle, host from 120 Sports. And I'll be on with Tim tomorrow. Tim, looking forward to it, buddy. Yeah, I'm, uh, they're giving me a little bit of a test run here. And the guy that I'm going to be co-hosting with, I work with 120 at 120 with. His name is Dylan McGordy. He was just a winner and went into a casting call. He's from New Jersey, half Irish, half Italian. Right. Went into a casting call, really knew his stuff, and they hired him. And he's funny. He's really, really good. That's great. Well, it sounds like fun. I'll be on with you tomorrow, I think, at 2.20 New York time. So, uh... So check that out. Where do we find you? WGN, right? Yep, it's on WGN. Yep, so I'm going to be on from 11 to 2 Central, which is 12 to 3 Eastern. So I appreciate you coming on. I know you. I never got your wedding gift in the mail, the cash, so this will do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, if that's perfect, perfect. Uh, I'd, I'd rather do this than the cash, actually. Quick 40-second spot. <laughs> uh, Tim, what do you think? Uh, what do you think about all the freshmen going down on this tournament? And uh, I don't know, really kind of phoning it in. Not a lot of Wiggins, all these guys. I mean, what do you think yeah, about? I, I mean, you know, I, I think I'd be doing the same thing. You know, come March, you're like, all right, when's the draft? Yeah, well, yeah. Start getting paid. Unfortunately, you know I mean? it's just natural. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. I mean, but I don't know. I think I, I know John's. A proponent. John's a real competitor, John Ritchie, and he hated, you know, the fact that Kyle Faney and Clowney uh, <laughs> did what he did too, kind of mailed it in because you want to get. I mean, you you hate they that, did. right, John? You you want competitive right to the end. Yes, I I don't think you can turn that on and off as someone as you some people to. seem to yeah right. portray. I don't See, think I that's possible, you, John. Like I'm the exact opposite. Like I would just mail it in once I got paid. I would just completely nail it in. Like, the fact that the Mariners <laughs> gave Robinson Cano 10 years, whatever, to 20 to 27 million years, 27. So you're telling me when he's 36 years old, he's going to want to go out and hit sliders in his offseason? And There's think, no uh, listen, you know, Tim, and you know what else is interesting about the Cano case is he's already got his ring with the New York Yankees. He's got a world he's got a World Series ring with the most storied franchise of all time. So there's no incentive to get the ring whereas you know when uh, A-Rod took all that money from Texas and then to New York he still had that incentive at least. Like let me get a World Series ring. Cano's got the ring. He's got the money. You're right. The Mariners is going to going to get a guy who I don't think is going to be giving him 100%. I, mean, oh, no. I, I like the. Uh, don't get me. Don't get yeah. me wrong. The guy's a great, a, a great hitter, but he might get he's a scumbag. Well, he he's doesn't seem like he was putting years. a lot of effort in at that's, times. That's the kind of player is. He looks. He makes it look effortless. You know when he's really trying. But I agree with Tim. I think yeah, year eight or nine, he's not. Uh, you know, he's not diving for a ball. <laughs> no way. He's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna be like uh, Tom. Be what, what was the guy? Corbin Burns for the major league. Like, right. Getting out of the way at third. I agree with you. I you know what, though? I, I think in a, in anyone's career, you're, you're going to have, like, ups and downs. You're going to have pitfalls. You're going to have times when you're injured and you're challenged to come back from it. There's always some edge that you're looking to find as a, as a competitor, as an athlete. I agree. And I think these guys find a way to create competition within themselves, even if it doesn't seem outright like there's any – around them because they're just being gifted with you'd, well, you'd like to tens think, of millions of dollars a year. Yeah, you'd like to think that a, a corporation, a company, well, that's what baseball teams are essentially, uh, you'd like to think that if they show that much confidence in you and that much love to where they're paying you the kind of money that changes not just your life, your descendants' life. Oh, yeah. For years and years, the Canoes are going to be able to go to Ivy League schools and have yachts. And, yeah. You know, right. it's 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 life-changing money for you and your family and, and descendants to come, unless one of them is a major F-up. <laughs> Could happen. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, odds are they're going to be comfortable for a long time. You'd think that's enough to where a person should show some class and say, listen, I am going to play my heart out for you. But unfortunately, and I'm not judging Cano, and I could be totally wrong, but well, I'm no, like I, Tim. I, I just, Look what they did to Pujols. Pujols and Josh Hamilton end up getting huge deals from the Angels. They move out to California, and they just completely nail it in last year. Both they did. Horrible year. They did. Well, Pujols, I think, wasn't doing the uh, steroids he liked to do. I mean, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know that for a fact. And he's getting older. He's older, but that's where the steroids come in. They make you right. younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. They, they, uh, they got a raw deal, the Angels. They got a raw deal with that. 
You know, I, I get, uh, it's funny to hear you say the steroids there. I, I, people don't like to talk about this in Chicago, and I want to get your opinion on this. Michael Jordan, okay, you would say probably the most competitive player ever. Most in competitive sport. at anything. You don't want to play Scrabble with that guy, it seems. Okay, great. So that, let's establish that. All right, John, I want to ask you this. So the most competitive player ever comes back to a sport the second time around. And he's, he's unsuccessful. The Magic ended up knocking him off right. in the playoffs. You're telling me that guy didn't look for a little bit of an edge? Maybe just a little bit. Maybe just a teeny weeny bit of an edge out there. Because every at that time, guys hitting 70 home runs. Uh, you, someone else was winning seven towards the Francis in a row, but no. No, it was, a, it, was, it was a it was it was a long time before good. that. Where Jordan was was before that. But no, I mean, he was right in the heart of, of Lance winning those races. No, well, at that time, uh, Lance no, Armstrong, we're talking about the 2000s we're, with Michael point, Jordan. We're talking. Is, right. You're telling me Michael Jordan never looked for an edge. I think he, I think, listen, I could believe that he did. There's no evidence. There's no story about it. But I understand where you're going, Tim. And I, I don't agree. think he did. I, well, I, I would believe either story. Michael Jordan didn't need to look for an edge through chemistry. Listen, he was already naturally. Uh, far and away, above and beyond, better gotta, athletically uh, than anyone else. We got to take well, a break. Well, he wasn't better than the Magic that year. His first year he came back. That's for sure. Neither was the rest of his team. We got to take a break. Back with Tim after this. Welcome back. Arnie Lang Show. Last few minutes of this hour with the great Tim Doyle. Tim has a new show starting. 120 Sports. What's the name of your co-host? Um, Dylan McGordy is who we're going to be on the radio with tomorrow. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. So yeah, be awesome. I, honestly, I want to say thank you for you were you were my first choice because uh, you're probably the most famous person I know. So I want to <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. Hey, listen, no problem. I, I appreciate I have fun with you. You're always a great guest here. What what like what would be the biggest thing? I've asked Danny this for Chicago sports. Would it be would it be the Cubs winning the World Series at Wrigley, clinching a Game Seven at Wrigley or Game Six, whatever? The series. Yes, that yes. would be the Even biggest thing. The, Yes, yeah. Even though it's the Bears, like, see, it, it, Chicago's only one team. So, like, the Southsiders and everybody, the, the yuppies, the poor yeah. people, everybody roots for the Bears. There's no other team. Right, but the Cubs are, you're talking about an institution, you're talking about just, a, a magic is about, the, even the White Sox have been around just as long, there's a magic about the Cubs and Wrigley Field yeah. and winning there. I don't think there could there would be anything bigger than the Cubs winning the World Series and, at Wrigley Field. And adding, c- clinching it at home. Right. Yeah. Uh, listen, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, Tim, you'd agree with that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, all, all, all the 100 plus years, yeah. I think it would be bigger than the Bears. You know, what the Bears did in 85, as far as, you know, they only lost one game, it was domination. I mean, they still talk about it here. 30 years I ago, know. talk about the Bears. That was an yeah. amazing, amazing team. I'll never forget being a kid, uh, being in high school, and opening up the, the New Jersey Star Ledger, made famous in The Sopranos, and seeing Willie Galt catch a bomb from McMahon week four. I don't know who they beat, but there was a catcher, a picture of Galt in the sports section catching it, and they were 4-0, and everyone's saying, just dominating with the defense and went on the 15-1 season. But they won, the, the you know, you had the Jordan year, so they won recently, but uh, I agree, the Cubs. Tim, I will see you tomorrow, buddy. I can't wait. John, Artie, have a good weekend. Thanks, Talk Tim. Good man. Tim, Tim Doyle, I'll be on with him tomorrow on WGN 120 Sports. Look for it, 2.20 p.m. Uh, East Coast time. Back in there. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.